Hi, this is Alex and welcome to the Zero to Alpha podcast. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing, my man? I'm good, man. I'm good. I had a good day of training. Uh, I had a good day at the gym. You know, played hoop with some of my teammates uh, for warming up. You know. So it was fun. Uh, nice. Uh, you recently had a, a fight, line fight 57, and you fought a more experienced opponent. I thought you won the fight after seeing it. So my first reaction was like how can you hang with an opponent with that much more experience than you um i feel like it's just uh, a matter of just knowing that you can do it you know uh nothing <clears throat> well i'm not gonna say it, it doesn't have an effect but experience is just uh experience is the past you know and the night of the fight is the present. So no matter how much experience uh, I feel like someone has, although it does give them the edge, they do have experience. If I just visualize that uh, we're both zero zero at the time, it, it kind of evens out the playing field in my eyes. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I know what you mean. And I'm able to go in with more confidence. Uh-huh. So you kind of assume that you and your level are kind of at the same level because you're facing each other at the same time, at a certain moment in time? Uh, yeah, and, um, you know, if uh, I could watch 100 fights on my opponent you know, as I'm getting ready, but I will never see the one that I'm going to actually face um, yeah. the night of the fight, you know, because uh, uh, the, the style that my opponent would have had to face uh, isn't my style, you know. Even no matter how similar it is, the person they've never met no one who thinks like me, and this is just how I perceive it, you know. Um, this, these are the things that I tell myself that that help me get over that. Oh, man, he's way more experienced, or he's a hometown kid, or uh, he's known for his knockouts. You know, even though I may have more experience, his knockout ratio is higher. You know what I mean? Like these are the things yeah. that that can really distort us. Um, but if, if it's just like, uh, you know, he's never met me before, anyone like me, he's never fought me before in his life, and even if he has fought me uh, a couple times, each time we fight, we fight a different person. And yeah. Um, so when you fight, do you have a, a game plan, or do you have sort of a game plan, but try to figure out your opponents while you're fighting? Um, it's a little bit of, of every. I have a, a game plan, uh, you know, and for me, a game plan is basically a pattern, you know, the patterns that I have patterns I try to fit in and work and get going, um, you know, to make my my style rolls smoothly, but everything is subject to change. Everything. So, uh, with my game plan, I know I'm gonna have to make adjustments. Uh, <clears throat> some of my rhythm comes from finding their and and making adjustments. Yeah. And you know, there's moments where in the exchange I'll have to uh, perceive it as I'm just picked up as we go. You know, because in those moments, I don't have too much time to think. I got to yeah. see where his openings are as he throws, you know, while we're in the exchange. Um, whether he lands or not, how does he react when he lands? Uh, when he misses, you know? Uh, how does he react when I land and when I miss, you know? Just stuff yeah. like that. So, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a, con it's constantly going like this. My, uh, game plan from game plan to game plan strategy to uh free flow adjustments back strategy uh, it's constant it's 
or just in one one uh, state. Uh, you men you mentioned you like to catch uh, the uh, the rhythm of your opponent. Like, how can you how do you catch up with the rhythm of the opponent? Because most people are like left, right, left, right, left, right. But some people are tricky with that. You know, they try to break the rhythm. Like, how do you feel, see? I don't know how you describe it. Uh huh. Um. Well, you 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 said it exactly. Um. Everyone is left, right, left, right, left, right. You know, uh, even when they double up on their left, uh, it's not that they didn't go to their right. It's just that their their weight shift was more incremental to their right. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, okay. So with, with that, with that understood, uh, but understood to an extent, I'm still learning every day about it. Um, it's a cadence. You know what I mean? All it is is a cadence, their rhythm. Even if their feet don't come off the ground, you can see it in their shoulders and, and in their hips where, where their weight is shifted, to the left, to the right. You know? And you catch a cadence uh, based off their rhythm. And uh, from there on, we, we just naturally have a tendency to pick up rhythms, uh, consciously or subconsciously. And uh, once I'm able to just keep that cadence i just start naturally picking up a rhythm and then i try to break that rhythm or use that rhythm you know uh, uh either or and um understanding my own rhythm as well you know because i just can't catch their rhythm without understanding mine i need to know my rhythm i need to catch their rhythm and uh by doing so i need to try to synchronize our rhythms to where I'm crashing into his rhythm as he's coming in, you know. He's crashing into my oh, yeah. strike. That's what I'm actually yeah. trying to do, you know. Uh, and I'm crash, yeah. I'm uh, crashing less, if not at all, with his. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So that that's just how I see it. Mm. You basically try to beat him as he steps in, and that's when you can catch him because his weight is coming forward, and your weight is coming forward. That's yeah. what you mean, right? Yeah, I feel like, I feel like I can throw uh, uh, efficiently that way. What I waste less energy because uh, he's doing some of the work for me based off his his rhythm. If his momentum is coming forward just from shifting forward, you know that's that's a little extra pop. You know, and who knows? That's that may be all I need. Hmm. And if you mix that up with angles, you can confuse your opponent. Is it? Uh, yeah, it's um. <clears throat> it's mixing that up, mixing in my rhythm, uh, working different cadences, uh, mm -hmm. whether the cadence be with my strike or my footwork or my head movement. Um, and then just once I'm able to catch a cadence, I'm just dancing. You know what I mean? Mm. Dancing. The, the cool thing about finding rhythm, that uh, about playing with the rhythm, is that um, everyone has a rhythm, right? Yeah. So uh, if you listen to a song, a song is a rhythm. And you can listen to it, any of us can listen to a song that we've heard maybe uh, never, you know, first time hearing the song. Give it like four bars, we'll at least know how to two-step to it, if not nod our head to it. You know what I mean? We just catch the rhythm. Um, yeah. And it's the same thing with uh, with an opponent, you know. It, if they're not one dimensional but less dimensional, uh, it, it'll be easy to catch their rhythm. And once I catch their rhythm, I can kind of know how to two step to them, you know, how to move my head with them. Uh, that's why it's important to have uh, a number of rhythms, different cadences, patterns, you know, not just one way. It's just whatever way works for the moment. That's the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, how, how do you train your rhythm? I've seen on Instagram that you had like a, something with the bag that you let, you let the bag swing and you like follow the rhythm of the bag and then you cut angles. Yeah, yeah. Um, bag work is, there's a number of ways we can work rhythm. Working it on the bag uh, is one of my favorite ways. It swings, right? It, yeah. it uh, at, at a constant rhythm, 
uh, more so, you know, a little bit of pressure to keep it going. But uh, I just try to stay within reach of it. And uh, and that's just forward and back, forward and back. Yeah. And as I go forward, instead of going back, I'll just pick a side, left or right, forward mm-hmm. and back, forward and back. And then when I come forward, and instead of going back, say I go left. I'm just moving out of the way. And, I, and the bag sort of cut the angle for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not all yeah. me. It's the way that mm. uh, whatever's in front of me is moving. You know? Yeah. 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 Moving smart. Like, yeah. Yeah. If you use your opponent, for example, you make them do the work for you and then you. Yeah. Like, uh, I would say just, and this is just my perspective. It's not, I wouldn't say it's correct. It's just all I know is all I know, you know? Um, yeah. To get, to get that big Lomachenko, uh, angle you know what i mean like like ha- a- as big an angle that, that he's able to get. um most of it is the opponent doing the work you know what i mean instead of me trying to jump all the way to the side of my opponent i'll pepper 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 and as soon as they commit forward i just step to the side and instead of me coming to them they have came to me yeah and i'm yeah, and i'm the same smart. angle that i was looking for well, that's what I try to teach at least. Do you think your unique style has made it easier to like uh, fight with more experienced opponents? Uh, I'm sorry, say it again. Uh, do you think your unique style has made it possible to fight with more experienced opponents? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I would say it helps me because, um, well, I'm. Again, I'm learning every day, so every day I'm constantly going. But I'm at a point where I understand my rhythm. I know how to use it. I know how to use my body type. Uh, not to its full potential, you know, I, I'm, that's an everyday search, you know. Uh, but I feel like I'm pretty good now. Um, uh, I have a pretty good understanding to where I can match my rhythm and my style to whatever's in front of me, you know. So whether that be a more experienced person or a less experienced person, I'll know how to match my, uh, my rhythm to theirs. But uh, more more so than anything, I feel like it's my mentality that helps me with the more experienced fighter. Um, okay. Because the thing that I've learned from uh, fighting experienced fighters to to lesser experienced fighters, the thing that stands out the most between them two is not necessarily the technique, but the coach, you know, um, it's easy to to touch some experience. Uh, it's easy to touch their emotions. It's easy to, to make their emotions come out. You know, with a more experienced fighter, they're composed from beginning to end. You touch them, composed. They touch you, composed. You don't see the excitement. You know, uh, oh, I got him. So I got to, uh, I got to get, you know, they're still, yeah. hope, still, uh, still going forward. You know what I mean, they're, they're breaking you down, but they're doing it with poise. They get hit. They're not reacting in such a way that, you know, see any sign of panic. You know, they get yeah. hit. It's just, But that's that's the. Could you repeat that the last part? Uh, You're, uh, yeah, falling away a little bit. Uh, I said that. Um, no, it's like okay. some do because uh, clearly you can tell it's their personality peeking through their. style you know but for the uh poser over him mm. um how did you develop your unique style because um in your first pro fight um you fought a little different 
you know, there was like, you could see the, the silky smooth side of you, but you felt different. <coughs> um, <coughs> each fight I learned something different, you know? Mm. Each fight I grew a little more. Um, each, so each fight I feel like got better and better, smoother and smoother. Um, that's just also my mentality, you know, it, it's crazy, man, because, uh, I wasn't as, I wasn't as smooth, but, uh, it's only because I, I didn't fully understand myself yet, you know what I mean, as far as, uh, mentally and physically, I didn't know how to use this instrument, you know, uh, known as my body. I didn't put in the time to to play with the nuts and bolts, you know. I was just, like, I'd work on my basics. I'd work on my strikes and stuff like that. But the in-betweens, you know what I mean? Uh, those are the things I never really focused on. And, it, and then slowly but surely, I started focusing on the things that, that chain them together. That's why I call them the nuts and bolts, you know, because I could work on my, I could work on my right kick. I could work on my left kick. I could work on my right hand. I could work on my hook. Um, yeah. and they all, they could all be phenomenal, but, yeah. uh, without anything, the time together, you know, what do you have? It's just like a car. You could have all the nice parts, most expensive parts, but if you don't have the nuts and the bolts, then you just got a pile of nice junk, you know, uh, yeah. and without the in-betweens, that's what my phenomenal strikes are. Just a pile of nice junk, you know, um. That's why I started to work on balance and coordination and, you know, just the in-between things, the things that chain it together. Um, that was the physical part. On the mental side, uh, my first pro fight, you know, I think it was my second fight for my gym or third. Uh, so I really wanted to make my coach and my teammates proud. You know what I mean? Because uh, I was a new, so I was the new booty up there. So, um, that, you know, it, it made me fight the way I did. You could see, uh, if you watch my rhythm alone in my earlier fights, I look anxious, you know, very anxious. And as I start to progress, I get less and less anxious, you know. Um, so instead of wanting to make them proud, uh, I just had to realize that they're already proud, you know. So there was no reason trying to uh, accomplish the task that's already done, you know. So one, once I figured that, oh, man, they're proud no matter whether I win or lose, as long as I do my thing, uh, yeah. then everything just started to come out more natural. Uh, okay. Basically yeah. letting go and focusing on, on you. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Um, I, I think I heard it or I read it that you tried to pick up uh, different aspects from different sports. I think it was Krav Maga you mentioned. How did you come up with the idea to like use different sports to develop your own style? Um, it, it's a whole bunch of things. I, I I don't think it was Krav Maga. I think the the first thing that that really was really out of my element that you know I've never even uh, watched before was uh, or paid attention to before was Wing Chun. You know what I mean? And then, like, just, just watching things, like, little things here, little things there, uh, that would just spark things. I wouldn't try to spark it, you know? Things just, just come to mind. Like, uh, there's this, there's this one scene, and I'm not sure if you've watched the movie Kung Fu Hustle, but it's like a comedy. It's a comedy karate movie, you know? And, uh, he's finding a whole bunch of people. And to hit an angle, all he did was shift his, his toes. He didn't move nothing but his toes. And he got a complete different angle. And that sparked some type of creativity in my head to where, uh, to help me out with my angles as well. You know? All it takes is a small shift. I don't have to move my whole body. Um, but it's just like stuff like that. And I get inspiration from everywhere. But it's not something that I go out and search for. Because uh, okay. most of the most of the time, when you search for things, you look past what, what's, uh, what's actually there at benefit. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. 
Yeah. So you kind of find them while you're working on stuff, like you you have an ID that suddenly pops up your head and you work with it. Yeah, it just it just pops in my head and I don't know, man. I just get up, start shadow boxing. You know, mm-hmm. no matter where I'm at, uh, it's it's just uh, I'm in it. You know, like that. Yeah. Maybe sixty percent of the time that I'm walking, whether it's from my car to the inside of the gas station, from the gym to my car, you know, from from outside, from down the street, whatever. Most of the time, I'm walking, and I'm just like. You know, as I'm going forward, like, things are just rolling and snowballing and, you know what I mean, and clicking. And, like, uh, yeah. it gets to a point to where I'm just, I'm just doing it every day. And, I, you know, I know, uh, not that I know, but I understand very well. There's still more room for growth, but I understand my body mechanics. Just because I do it, so often, there's no teacher like repetition. You know, repetition is boring yeah. and it's tedious, but it'll teach you things that you can't learn from nothing else. You know? Yeah. And if you want to get good yeah. at it, you gotta 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 rep it. I, I feel like it's the same uh, concept of driving. You know, I use driving because everyone can relate to driving. Our first uh, when we first get behind the wheel, we're excited. We're like, oh, hell yeah, I'm driving. You know what I mean? Uh, but at the same time, we're anxious, uh, and then we're having fun doing it. Then eventually, it gets like oh, I don't feel like driving, you know. Uh, yeah. I only go a few drives. You know what I mean? Mm. It. Then we do it uh, more and more and more to where we hate it. If I if I have to go somewhere and I don't and I have to drive, eighty percent chance I'm not gonna go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like unless I'm riding with someone, because I hate okay. driving. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, but that's only through repetition. Now we're all able to yeah. drive and watch movies on our phone. But I'm not. I'm not suggesting that. But people yeah. are all the drive. You know? mm. uh, and that's repetition. Do it every day, all day, every day. You know. Um, if I'm working on my kick, I gotta rep it. It's fun. Yeah fun it's fun then it gets boring then it's like oh, i don't want to do it i hate this i hate this it sucks yeah. you know repetition that, then i go a little bit more and then uh it just gets to a point to where you know i can sit here and have a conversation with one of my buddies while i'm doing bag work you know yeah and it's just uh it comes out natural only through repetition though i mean we have to yeah hate it There's, the only reason why we hate it is because we understand it you know the, yeah, the in and yeah. out. Yeah, I kind of fell in love with it over time because uh, I have a karate background and uh, okay. I started out in MMA later on. And uh, my first second coach, he was a, he had a Muay Thai background and he was like, "You're kicking completely wrong." He wanted me to kick the Muay Thai way. He was like, "You have to kick up." And I was like, well, "What?" I, I don't understand. And now that I train in Thailand, I was like, "Oh, this is what he means." And then I started to rap it because I was like, "Oh, this is a good feeling. This yeah. is natural." Yeah. yeah. Yeah, whatever works for you, man. Whatever works for yeah. you. Yeah. Do you think um, a lot of coaches like kind of force a style on you? Because you say whatever works for you, but I have this feeling, this is based on personal experience as well, that most people are like, oh, this guy has this kind of striking style, and it, I didn't understand it, so I'm going to try to force my style onto you so that I can understand what you're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, and uh, personally, uh, I don't think that, uh, I. Uh, first off, I do agree, yeah, it, it's done, you know, there are coaches that do that, um, yeah. and, but from my perspective, I, I don't feel like it's intentional, I feel like the message is just transferred wrong, you know what I mean? Uh, okay. what, what they're really trying to say is, like, and this is just how I hear it when I do hear it. Uh, what they're really trying to say is, all I can show you is what I know. Yeah. And if, if you if you're trying to do anything else, I I can't help you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. All I can do is share my perspective and what I know. And you yeah. know if if that's not if it's if what I know 
isn't something that uh, fits you, you know, mm. maybe this gym isn't for you. Or, but yeah. uh, you know, like I said, I feel like the message is just transferred wrong. It's like, no, you got to do it this way. You know what I mean? Uh, that's the way it's yeah. coming out. But it's it, it's really meant like man, because all, all all people can tell you is what they know. All they know is all they know. You yeah. Know what I mean? mm. um, yeah. So it, it's just like, all right, I, I understand. You know, uh, it, it it's not it don't really rub me the wrong way. You know what I mean? Because um, that's the thing. It's like if if uh, if someone ain't willing to be there, you know, like the the law of attraction. You know what I mean? Um, it it only attract the people that are down for that style. Anyone yeah. else playing with that style, they won't last long. But they'll find find a place that, that uh their style fits. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, currently you're fighting Muay Thai. Do you have like aspirations to cross over to kickboxing or MMA? Uh, yeah, I've actually been training uh, a little bit here and there, and I'm, I'm trying to uh, see what's up. You know, I'm down to fight uh, whoever and whatever now. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Um, how do you balance uh, grappling and Muay Thai now? Because I've seen you that you have been into grappling. Lately, yeah. a little bit maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just do what I can. Mm. You know, I just do what I can. Uh, I can't put as much time into striking, uh, as I used to because it was just all day striking for me. That's all I would work on, you know. Um, but uh, I'm just taking it for what it is and doing what I can. And actually, I feel like uh. Not doing striking all day has made my strike better, you know. Uh, okay. Uh, learning different concepts of grappling, uh, a lot of it transfers to striking. To striking and front striking, you know, uh, depending yeah. on which side you're explaining it from, you know. Because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my coaches and teammates are able to help me understand certain techniques by the relevance that it has to strike, you know? So, okay. um, with that, whatever concepts that I learned, use techniques and Oh yeah, you fell away a little bit. But I think you're back. Man, it's certain Thailand is a <laughs> it's horrible in moment. Um, what would you change in your striking style to make it a super MMA? Oh, it's okay. My uh, my phone started. Um, oh, okay. Okay, so my my last question was, um, so I've seen you doing some MMA sporting recently on Instagram. Uh, what what would you change to your style to make it suit for MMA? Because uh, MMA striking is a little different than Muay Thai striking or kickboxing striking because of the the smaller gloves. Yeah. Um. Well, so far, the adjustments that I've made. Uh, I can't really tell, you know, because the my main thing is just finding the rhythm of MMA. Okay. Uh, and, again, it goes back. Everything goes back to rhythm. Everything has its own rhythm. Uh, boxing has its own rhythm. Uh, kickboxing has its own rhythm. Taekwondo. Uh, you know what I mean? MMA. Mm -hmm. Like it, it. Everything. Uh, the list goes on. Baseball. Basketball, football, everything has its own rhythm, you know. Um, I'm just trying to find that rhythm, what it is. And then uh, once I'm able to, uh, to know the rules, then I'll be able to break it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Interesting. Um, 
Would you still use your uh, active guard like you did Muay Thai? Would I, uh, would I still what? Would you still use your... Uh, you have a pretty active guard. Like you sometimes block strikes with your gloves. Like you... Yeah. For example, your left... Your uh, right hand will go to your left side to block an overhand or something. For example, would you still do that in MMA? Um... Circumstantially. Mm. Uh, yeah, depending on the opponent and... Uh, yeah, you know, um, the, th the thing is, like, it, if my, my guard also persuades a reaction, you know, so I might hold my, my guard there to persuade, you know, them to go another route. Um, who yeah. knows? I, I might do it to try to, uh, put pressure in their face, you know, and, um, look out for the right hand, but, and by the position and height and distance of my guard, uh, what I try to accomplish, at least, is um, persuasion, you know? It's not that I can see everything coming a mile away. It's, it's that I try to persuade certain attacks you know, okay. by my guard and, and the way I'm moving. So, uh, circumstantially, yeah, I, I would. Okay. Um... What's, what's a, a typical training day for you like? Because you have your mandatory sessions from the gym, like uh, lifting, running, I guess, and then the yeah. group sessions. Yeah. Uh, how do you fit in your own stuff? Uh, uh, what, what's, what's my own stuff? Like, uh, what do you consider my own stuff? Like, what's a typical training day for you? Let's start off with that one. Um, on mon Mondays and Wednesdays are pretty much the same. I'll I'll take my kids to school if uh, if if I don't have a personal in the morning. Uh, okay. Then I'll head to the gym. If I do have someone in the morning, I'll leave extra early to get there so I can work out before they get there. And then uh, I'll I'll chill for a little bit. Maybe work out again. Uh, in, in between training sessions, uh, like me and some of, our t uh, some of my teammates, we'll get together. We'll go play uh, play basketball. You know, uh, okay. we'll play soccer. Uh, we just mess around, man. You know, always moving, always, always playing, always. Uh, you know, just 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 growing. You know what I mean? Okay. And then. Yeah. Train, train again uh, around 1 o'clock, and then I'll go uh, to another city and teach teaching classes. Okay. But uh, other days, I'm just all over the place, but I'm always training. Mm. So there is, the other days, there is, like, not really a routine? Uh, yeah, like, most of the time I wing it. You know, um, uh, I have a plan, but like I said, everything's subject to change. So uh, I just always have something to do. I'm I'm never like lost. Like, oh, what should I do now? You know, I find I find stuff to do. Yeah, 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 always, always learning, always growing. Yeah. So I assume you train six times a week. Uh, yeah. What are some uh, some ways to recover? I know that you use CBD. I use that one as well. What are some other ways? Because like training a lot can well overtraining is real or under recovery, whatever you want to call it. Like how do you avoid yeah. that? Um, I I do what I can. I uh, I try to look at it as saving money you know I'll, I'll i'll be able to save money and still have money if i put a little bit in at a time enough i just put yeah. just enough in every day mm -hmm. just enough you know not too much to where i can't go the next day just enough uh and 
and it differs every day. So it's constantly just based off feeling how I'm how I'm feeling. Uh, if I'm feeling crappy, I'll I try to assess on what I've eaten the last couple of days. How much sleep I've been getting. How hard I've been training. Or if I'm feeling great, I'll question okay. if I'm even pushing it. But uh, at times where I'm pushing, it, I'm just having fun, and that's where a lot of, uh, happens as well. So uh, it differs. It differs day to day. You know, uh, balance is a daily routine. You know, like like our hygiene. You know what I mean? Like every day, yeah. brush your teeth. Uh, it's just like uh, finding that balance is a constant act it's not yeah. in place mm. is there a is there a big difference between your training inside and outside camp besides the obvious extra cardio probably yeah yeah uh, when I'm outside of camp you know I'm more I'm more relaxed uh, I'm not going crazy on my diet, but I'm not I'm not saying no. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, when camp comes, I'm more focused. I'm more tuned in. My life changes because uh, I go from being a father, husband, to just being a fighter. Because when I'm in that fight camp, uh, the a father and husband don't, you know, yeah. and, and I'm just grateful that my wife understands, you know, that that's how it is and that's how it must be. Uh, because when it's when it's fight time, it's all about the fight. Nothing else matters. Nothing else exists. Um, nothing but my fight. Nothing but my opponent. Nothing but my opponent. So I'm not in fight camp. I try to give them as much of me as possible, uh, yeah. and that's what, that's what, that's why I make sure I get my training in, make sure I uh, keep that maintenance going. Uh, but most of all, I make sure everything's right at home because that's where it all starts. Yeah. Um, you're a you're a very technical fighter. Um, do you spar a lot? Uh yeah, I, I love sparring. Okay. Sparring's my favorite, man. You know, uh, <laughs> ain't, ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't nothing like it. Ain't nothing like the real thing, man. Like I love drilling too, though. Don't get me wrong. I could drill forever. Drilling is hella fun. Um, but uh, sparring, man, it's just. I I, I think sparring is the most fun to me because. It's the raw emotion. You don't get the emotions when you're drilling. You know? When you're sparring, yeah, you get to see their emotions. Uh, are, are they emotional or are they emotionless? Uh, mm. what, what makes them tick and what makes them get excited? You know, you're testing all these things with your weapons, your feints, you know, uh, your, your presence, your composure, your rhythm. It's just that game, man. I love it so much. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I think I'll be sparring until I'm 60 or more. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I love it too. Well, it depends. Like, I don't like the, the sporting where people go like 100% to the head. I'm not really yeah. a fan of that. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, you mentioned before when I asked you about it on Instagram. It's like, I have, my, I have certain people where I like to spot hearted because I know even though we go hard, it's still controlled. Like, I know I yeah. won't get injured. Yeah. I think uh, that's, that's very important. Yeah, I, I agree, man. You know, hard sparring is, is great uh, with the right people. And you can't just hard spar, you know. I, I found that the, that the people that I've been able to hard spar with are people that I've built relationships with. You know, yeah. you have to build that sparring relationship. You can't just go into it, you know. It's like you guys start with respect and, and soft and get each other's rhythm, and, you know what I mean? And you guys start, uh, over time, you guys are able to pick it up without taking it personal, you know. Yeah. You can get, you can get angry, 
You can get frustrated. You're, you're alive. But don't take it. You know? Yeah. Uh, those are the things that, that mess up hard spawn. You know? Hard spawn part. People that take it personally. It's not personal. You know? Uh, and and in that sense, with my hard sparring partners, uh, we still take care of each other. You know, yeah. there's been times where I've hurt them, or they've hurt, me. and uh, in that moment, we both recognize it. You know, the yeah. person who landed as well as that it landed, and we just work. We work back to cover. You know what I mean? And, yeah. But whoever is attacking will pepper, will lighten up. They'll, they'll keep that pepper going, keep that pressure going. As we, as you're recovering, let you recover and get back to it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like uh, it, these are the things that happen with great uh, hard sparring partners. But it, it's a, it's a relationship that has to be built from the ground up. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I agree on that one. Like one of my. Uh... My favorite sparring partner is uh, Sean Fagan because he's, he's way more experienced than me. But like when we spar, he he just he always he downgrades for me, and then I'm able to grow by sparring with him because yeah. he makes sure that I still can develop my style. But he we go pretty hard sometimes. It's pretty yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can learn from him, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, how much hard sparring do you do before a fight? Because I know your coach is uh, the biggest fan of hard sparring. Man, it's crazy. I didn't do much hard sparring f- before my last fight or the fight before that, I feel like. Um, maybe like a couple rounds here or there, but not okay. much. You know, I, I, felt, I felt like my team felt, my team feels like, my coach feels like, I'm, I co- uh, and uh, everyone else that that's you know around feels like we don't need it that much we know we're all tough we know we got it there's times the coach will let us know like okay guys we're going for it today you know uh, let everyone know that they're not made of glass and then yeah. you know get back to it uh, nice and easy you know what I mean yeah um do you think technical scoring uh, a lot of technical sparring would make a lot of fighters better because, like, Lurzilla, Sanchai, they all come from the same gym. And they, I think they mostly did play sparring and bag work, if yeah. I recall correctly. Yeah. Uh, no doubt, man. No uh, doubt. That's my favorite way to spar. Okay. My favorite way to spar, man. My favorite way to spar is uh, with... Bad gloves and no shin guards. You know what I mean? Landing everything, man. You know? Yeah. Uh, but, again, it, it's with someone that you built that with. You know? You don't yeah. just do that. Um, you guys are able to, to touch each other up and still protect yourselves. Um, yeah. It makes it more realistic because it's, um, you know, where it, it's more accuracy-based now. That we don't have shin guards because when you have shin guards on, you just flop your leg out uh, half the time, not realizing what part of the shin you're landing with, you know. And yeah. it's funny how how uh, those inches create huge differences, you know, in reactions and in uh, the way you play. And it's a lot of give and take, you know. It's not always win, win, win. You know, you you take two. Uh, that's how you play, you know. Yeah. And, uh, it, it it's hard to play with some someone who's just all win win win. I mean, if they're outclassing you with just little timing, uh, uh, teeps and stuff like that, you know, it's it's cool. But it's all playful, you know. What I mean? Yeah, and it, it's all about emotions, and people got to keep their composure, you know, and just know that it's all play. It's all play. Yeah, the the bag loss, that those are the eight eight ounce ones. I think so. Mm, that, those are the thumbless ones, right? You said what? Those those are the, the gloves without the thumb? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay, yeah, smaller gloves. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Do you think, uh, so you use the smaller gloves because it's more realistic? Uh, just because it feels, it feels nice. It, it tightens up, you know, if we both have smaller gloves, it, it, it just naturally tightens up our guard, you know. Uh, yeah. And if we get used to, to block the small glove, when, when it comes to a big glove, it, it's, uh, it's like a big watermelon you're blocking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like a fake feeling of safety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you uh, how did you develop your defense? Because like I, this is also based on my experience. But I feel like a, a lot of gyms where I went, they they were just the coach would be like, okay, throw this combo, throw this combo, throw this combo, and they would like neglect stuff like footwork, head movement, slips, rolls, you name it. You know, just defense in general. Like, how did you develop your defensive style? Um, I don't know. Like, like I can never really pinpoint uh, anything. It's just because everything was inspired by something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, a little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, so I can't really pinpoint it. But mm -hmm. it's just the fact that I remember asking myself, okay, how can I stay relevant? in the game uh, and fight for a long time. And it was just work on my timing, work on my rhythm, work on my balance, and don't get hit. You know, uh, if I could catch a rhythm with anyone, you know, if my timing is great, my timing will take me a, a long, it'll take me further than I, than I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, just by not getting hit, you know? Uh, yeah. And then just just playing with my defense. I play with my defense the same way I play with my offense. You know the way you mix, the way you mix and match your strikes. I mix and match my defense as well. You know, I I don't consider just having one guard. Sometimes my guard is long. Sometimes it's short. Sometimes I'm, you know, uh, bobbing and weaving, and sometimes I'm pulling. Uh, it's just all natural. But and what I'm oh. mm. um, how did you how did you make your head movement work in Muay Thai? Because like head movement in boxing is different than head movement in any other combat sports where kicks are involved. Yeah. Um. It, it's just. It's just understanding my rhythm and my weight transfer and their weight okay. transfer. You know, uh, if I ever find myself in a position to where I can't get head kicked, I'm watching the leg already. You know, as I slip the, uh, as I slip the jab, I'm already looking at the leg. There's no reason to look at the jab once it's already uh, slipped. And, oh, um, okay. You know what I mean? Like this little yeah. stuff like that. If I slip the cross, I'm already looking at the leg. Uh, uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm, I'm already watching it before it comes. So in a, in a fight, your vision changes constantly. There are, a lot of people are confused by this. They're like, what? I've heard a lot of people give different answers to this. Like some people say, oh, watch your chest. So you're basically aware of what can come next. And you yeah. focus your attention on that. Um, actually, anything that you've ever heard, they're all right. You know what I mean? Um, if someone asks you, while you're driving, what do you look at? Do you look at the street? Are you watching the sides? Are you watching your rearview mirror? Are, are you watching the car in front of you? Are you watching two cars ahead of you? You know, like, what are you looking at? And, uh, while trying to explain this, uh... They would probably get the idea that you're just like, like looking around so crazy, just trying to watch everything, not realizing that it's just all relaxed peripherals. You know, mm. you're just aware. You're just, you know, if something pops in the middle of the street, you know, it hit the brake. You know, it's just, it's automatic. 
Um, it's the same thing as watching the body. Like, I'm just constantly scanning, you know, scanning my peripherals, uh, top, bottom, their rhythm, you know, the the depth perception, you know what I mean? Just, like, left, right. Like, what are they doing? What are they throwing? What are they... I'm keeping a tally of what they're throwing as well. It's like, what are you trying to accomplish? Mm. Um, I, wanna, I wanted to, like, because you mentioned uh, rhythm a lot. Like, yeah. how, how, how did you become aware of your own rhythm? Because you mentioned that a lot. Uh, probably through music. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, li- I listen to a lot of music. And okay. uh, uh, I'm always just moving to the music, you know, whenever I'm shadow boxing, you know, I love to dance. Sometimes I warm up, uh, I'll dance as a warm up, you know, uh, just to get my body moving and everything loose. Um, and then it just, everything just comes out. You know what I mean? Like, you don't even have to try. You don't even have to think. You can just feel it come out. Once you find your rhythm, just start two. Uh, just all I have to do is start two stepping to one of my favorite songs, and then everything will just start to come out. And I'll just, I, I won't even know what I'm doing really, but at the same time, be fully conscious. Hmm. How do how do you how do you find that rhythm in the ring? Because in, in the ring you don't have the music. Um. Because uh, I'm catching the cadence of their rhythm, oh. and that's, oh, okay. that's you know, and that's music. Uh, hmm. They're they're left right left right. Even if they're hopping, they're hopping uh, front forward front forward whatever left right left right. Uh, yeah. Like there there's there's all rhythm. Um, and once I start catching the cadence, like. I'm just so used to catching the rhythm and moving to a rhythm. Uh, I feel like things just come out naturally. Mm. Um, still not, I mean, still not perfected though, you know. I'm, there's still things I'm working on constantly, daily, and you know, just trying to make better. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something that I try to figure out as well. It's that that's the reason why I I wanted to have you on the podcast to, like, get a deeper understanding of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Um, do you do you study the, uh, the fight game a lot outside of training? Um, kind of, sort of. You know, I, I'll just watch random fights. I watch my, I got my favorite fights that I like to watch. Um, I watch a lot of, like, Fight IQ uh, breakdowns and just stuff like that. I'll uh, I'll watch fights over and over and over, um, and try to just look at them from different perspectives. You know what I mean? Uh, and it, it's crazy because when you do that, you, the whole fight changes. Uh, but uh, I just try to watch things that spark my spark my interest and spark my creativity. You know, uh, I can't say that I followed enough that if you name a fighter, I'd be like, oh yeah, I know who you're talking about, because uh, I, I have a real bad memory when it comes to that. <laughs> I just know like if I see someone familiar, I'm like, oh yeah, I've I've seen him before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what the if you watch fights, what are strikers that you like to watch? Because, for example, uh, yeah, I think it was you. Uh, yeah, it was probably you. I saw on Instagram that you were like picking the guards like Lomachenko did, you know, dropping one glove and then jabbing. To... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, who are like your favorite strikers to, uh, uh, to look? Man. Lomachenko is definitely one of my favorites. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Julio Cesar Chavez is definitely one of my favorites. Roy Jones Jr. is definitely one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. uh, James Tony. Uh, of course, Muhammad Ali, man. Um, yeah. 
Uh, who else? Savar. Uh, Sav Savar. Uh, you know, it's like a lot of the old school guys. Those those are all my favorites. Favorites. I mean, other than Lomachenko, he's man. He's not even old school. He's ahead of all of us. <laughs> yeah, he's he's years ahead of the game. Yeah. Uh, um. What what did you take away from a? Uh, you did a, a seminar with Lorzilla. Uh huh. What did you, what did you take away from him? Oh man, it was it was so dope because uh, a lot of it was stuff learned. A few of the things were uh, just just uh, solidifying, you know. Uh, it it just really it opened my eyes to see the real uh, the way he was. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he's really about it. And he's just chill about it, you know. Uh, he plays, he has fun, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and that's how I like to fight. Elusive and having fun, you know, being playful, you know. Yeah, that, that's just the uh, side thing. Have you ever trained in Thailand or do you have aspirations to train and or fight here? Uh... I, one of my aspirations right now is to go out and train with Lurzilla. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, man. We we'd have a lot of fun, man. We had a lot of fun when we were uh, when we were out there together. But uh, I did train in uh, in Sitsong Penang in Bangkok. Okay. Just just for like three weeks. That three yeah. weeks was so fun, man. You know what? Yeah. That's that's actually uh. One of the places that sparked my um, my interest for rhythm, because they were just okay. so great. They were just so great at it, man. Like before, I feel like as I was thinking about it, they were already stuffing me. As I was thinking about coming forward, they were already stuffing me, and not fast. They were. It's not that they were super fast. It's just that they were well timed, you know. Yeah. And I wanted to find that timing. Yeah, but uh, I lived on a uh, Nang for three months, and they had a, a Rod Majoran champion. He was undefeated for like ten fights, and when he when he sparred with people, he w he would just lean on the ropes, and the only thing he would do was steep. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and 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 one one guy got mad at him. He was like, "Yeah, you're only steeping," and his response was, "Yeah, okay, I only steep, but you can defend it. Like you you can't get past my." <laughs> <laughs> He was a, he was a, like it was a box of knowledge. It was fun to yeah. pick his brain. But yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was an amazing guy. Um, do you have, do you have uh, aspirations to uh, to fight here? Uh, where in Thailand? Yeah, in Thailand. I would like to, man. You know, it's always been a dream of mine to. Uh, Fight in the homeland of of Muay Thai. Uh, I mean, it's crazy though. You know, it it is a dream of mine, but it's not a priority. Okay. I got I got to keep it real. It's not a priority uh, because it, if it was a priority, I'd be out there doing it. Yeah. You know, uh, obviously I'm not. So. Uh, it's not as a, it's not as much of a priority as I would try to make it out to be. Um, mm. If one day I, I do decide to make it a priority, you know, it would it would be nice. It would be a dream. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's like wherever the journey takes me, it's a dream that I can go without. Mm. It, it's yeah. it, it's probably one of those dreams that uh, is just nice. Remaining a dream, you know, because mm. then it could be whatever I want it to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, fighting here is fun, but uh, damn, there's a lot of shitty shit here, man. It's like no, no way in. Oh yeah. 
yeah, and uh, when I fought in, well, that's my only fight, but and it was my first fight, and uh, they were wrapping my hands, and uh, my my uh, my coach goes like, yeah, that's your opponent, and I look at him and I was like, that's <laughs> no way, he he's, he's too big. And I was like, no, you're joking, he's not to have the kilos, and he looks at me with this killer face and he's like, yeah, you fight that guy, and I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was he had like he had like ten kilos on me and I was like oh well here we go yeah <laughs> was yeah. was was, an was a fun experience though but I, yeah. I there are mismatches here some fights are rigged but it, it's all a fun experience in the end oh and uh, yeah. no medical no medical oh yeah oh uh, I had a I had a tennis did elbow. you win uh, did you... So, sorry I said did you win yeah I won and uh, it took me five rounds though because I had an I had an injury going into the fight. I had, oh, a, I, had a, I had a tennis elbow and so there was like a bump of fluid and he kicked it in the in the seconds and my whole arm was like swollen and I couldn't throw my left anymore. I was like, Oh shit. Dang. Yeah, so it took me five rounds. But I, I don't regret it. It was a lot of fun. I, w I would advise everybody to try it here. Yeah. That's um, cool. Oh yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, what's your way to get into zone or whatever you want to call it before a fight? Is it like being present in the moment? Uh, I don't know, man. You know, it it it, it differs. It differs. Um. Because I learned something about myself each fight, so mm -hmm. each camp I approach each camp differently, and by the way I approach my camp is the way that I approach my uh, I approach being in the back and being prepped and ready for a fight. Uh, it, it, it's an everyday search, you know, an everyday process, just like balance, um, music. You know, uh, silence. Um, sometimes I, sometimes I watch fights. Sometimes, before, uh, yeah, you before watch fights. Fight. Okay. Yeah, like like some of my favorite fights. You know, stuff like oh, that. Not, not the not the fights that are going on. Nah. Oh, okay. Uh, shadow box. I could shadow box forever. I love shadow boxing. Shadow boxing gets me into my zone, man. Okay, interesting. Like, watch well, just as long as I got some music, I start shadow boxing and uh, I'm gone. <laughs> hmm. Um. So, you, the feelings before every fight are different, or do you kind of found a pattern? It's different. Hmm. It's different. Uh, in, in what ways? I mean, I can't say. It's, I just know it's different. You know, uh, I can point out reasons why it's the same, and I can point out reasons why it's different. Uh, but ultimately, I don't know why. It's just you know, the the settings, settings in front of me are different, and each setting uh, triggers certain emotions. You know. Subconscious, whether it's my opponent, whether it's you know uh, uh, what's going on in the back, depending on how my weight cut went, you know that could probably come across my mind. But the whole thing is to just ride it, whatever comes, just riding. Oh, you know, and yeah, somehow. Uh, mm. So it's different time. The ride is different. Uh, it's uh, it's like enjoying the present moment and uh, the feelings that come with it. Yeah. Yeah. What? And, and and there's there's no good or bad feelings. There's only feelings. You know. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's more just. Like like, like the the feeling that that people uh, talk about the most is nervous. You know? Yeah. How do you how do you not so nervous or control your nervousness uh, for a fight? It's like the thing is you're not supposed to control them. 
You know, feel nervous. Feel as nervous as you want to at the industry. The thing is, that balance that makes you feel this nervous. You know what I mean? People go through life never feel anything. Never take anything. Never take anything that makes you feel this nervous. As in going into a fight. You know? Uh, like, like you, you vibration right here that most will never uh, reach. Be grateful for this. That makes you you still and you're gonna be okay. Uh, could you repeat that the, the last part, please? You kind of uh, the connection kind of fell away. Uh, what last part? Well, was well, as soon as you started, it was kind of like breaking apart. Uh, I don't even know where to start from. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I, mean, I have the feeling I missed out on some valuable information. <laughs> ah, and I forgot the question. Oh, right. feelings, is for a fi- feelings is for a fight, I remember. I think you were talking, oh, about being nervous. Uh. Oh, yeah, but I said, uh. Um, a lot of times when people feel feel nervous and they ask how do you control your nerves and stuff yeah. like that, it's uh, it's really you're you're not supposed to control it, you know. Mm. The thing the thing is, uh, we just we have to be grateful that we found something that makes us feel this nervous, you know. Most people go through life and don't even uh go towards anything or take any leaps uh make this no this no this that's just be grateful for it interesting but also being nervous is kind of part of fighting right because well somebody somebody wants to knock you out so you're kind of aware of it it's like your body preparing in a way, I guess. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Some some people, you know, they they ride it different. Some people don't get nervous. Some people, uh, you know, some people are cracking up. Some people are smoking cigarettes. You know, everyone has their <laughs> day. <laughs> um, do do you feel a difference between fighting? beginning of a card and like fighting as a main event uh, I feel because a difference of... I, okay. I, I, I feel the difference not in my fight I just feel the difference uh, in the atmosphere mm. you know it, it, it's just different mm. but the fight is like once I go I'm headed towards the ring. Uh, like once I step in the ring, it's go time, you know? Yeah. Nothing else matters. Mm. I'm as good because, like, fighting on the beginning of the card is basically you walk in, you wrap your hands, and it's uh-huh. almost fight time. But when you're on the main, when you're the main event, it's like you have to wait. Yeah, depending on, on the cards. A couple of fights before you can fight, and it's like the waiting kind of makes a difference, I guess. Uh, yeah, and, and that's what I mean. The atmosphere, the atmosphere is oh, what's okay. is what's different. Um, in the beginning of the in the beginning of the card, you fight, uh, you win, you go celebrate, you enjoy the rest of the evening, the rest of the card, with your family and your loved ones. Um, and, and you leave the the back room with a packed house. You know what I mean? All right, y'all. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, when you become the main event, it gets lonely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Uh, it's like you see everyone 
start to trickle, you know. Sometimes, and, and the energy is different every time. Sometimes, you know, oh, yeah, everybody went in on red, you know what I mean? Like, we, we all put W's, you know, everyone's coming back with W's, W's. Sometimes everyone's coming back with losses, you know, L's, 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 you know. <laughs> and sometimes it, sometimes like sometimes it's mixed, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but but the energy's different, you know, but but as everyone starts to trickle, you know, uh it's like you, you start to zone in and it's crazy. It's like it's not lonely in a sad way, it's lonely in a in a uh uh isolated way. But I'm there, there's only certain things that, that we can hear in isolation. Um, and those things, you know, they just... Life, life's a fire, man. Life's a fire. You know, it, it depends on how you look at it. You can either look at it like that, or you can look at it as, oh my gosh, man, this is hell of a I don't even feel like fighting anymore. Get this shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just stuff like that. Uh, or you can use it. You know what I mean? If you if you're willing to listen to isolation, you just want to hear something. Yeah, I have to because I'm fighting in 13 days, and uh, being white makes it main event in most stadiums for uh-huh. some reason. <laughs> so I was like, I've never done that. So I was like, just wanted to. I think it will be an interesting experience. I'm looking forward to it, to be honest. I just, yeah. for, for me, personally, I, I think I won't watch the fights that are going on. I think that if you see like a crazy knockout, you'll be like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said, you said if you see a knockout? <laughs> Sorry? You said if you see a knockout? Yeah, if you see like a crazy knockout. Like for example, the, the knockout from uh, Kevin Lee, this week, oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if you see that just before you have to walk out, you're like, eh. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Please maybe, little, please maybe a little bit with the mind. <laughs> <laughs> I should pump uh, you up. I should pump you up. That, that's true as well. There's, both way, there's multiple ways to look at it. Do you, do you use visualiz- visualization before a fight? Uh... Somewhat, somewhat. I don't try to uh, fall too deep into visualization because uh, just because I know myself, okay. and I can and I tend to start to go overboard with the visualization, you know, and visualizing things, and uh, then seeing like multiple realities of that one thing. You know what I mean? And it's just I just got stuff on my plate that I'm just like too far out there and I'm just uh, I'm just totally floated away from basics <laughs> mm. so for example you never you never put on your calendar on the date of the fight like uh, KO win or something or dominant win or um no uh, I've uh, I, I've had my opponent's pictures on my screensavers Okay. Uh, so every time I open my phone, I see him. Mm. And uh, how how does that help you? Is it like getting familiar with the face, or uh, multiple ways? You know, there's only there's some ways that I I can name, and some ways that I'm sure it it helps that I I don't even realize. But uh, yeah, get, getting familiar with the face is one of them. Uh, Getting sick of looking at that face is one of them. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, um, on the days where I feel like, man, I just can't do it, you know? Like, I, his picture's right there, you know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm always, I always assume, I'm always assuming my, my opponent is training. Training just as hard as me, you know, uh, and I I refuse to let him out out train. Mm. Um, 
does that kind of keep you going when you're tired? Because like there's a thin line between pushing it and like taking a day off, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um. There's a there's a way of listening to your body. You know what I mean? Uh, where where you can sort of make the distinction, and again, you know, it, it's it's a daily search for uh, what's distinct uh, between pain, like actual pain, and like just being tired and exhausted, you know, and one. Uh, they're two different things, you know. A lot of times, being tired and exhausted can cause us to feel pain. <laughs> you know, give us the illusion yeah. of pain. And oh yeah, okay. Just searching for a reason. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And when you're physically really trying, and uh, the pain is real. You know what I mean? Uh, the mm-hmm. pain is is the indicator. Uh, it's just not getting the two mixed up, you know what I mean? And it's hard trying to, trying to keep that balance, let alone find it. Have you, have you ever thought about, like, making a course or a, a YouTube channel about your striking philosophy and your training methods? Uh, yeah, I, I've thought about it, you know. Um, currently, like, uh, got a book in the in the works. I don't even know if it's gonna be a book. You know, I just I just got stuff written down here and there. You know, um, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's just it's weird, and and I've procrastinated because uh, a lot of times I'm like, man, like people really want to hear what I got to say. You know what I mean? And it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just. I've just been fully engulfed in training lately. You know what I mean? I, I'm I'm on this mission right now. Uh, I, I'm it, it's a mission, but I'm just simmering. You know, uh, and, and right now training is where my focus is. I mean, I can do that simultaneously, but the the motion is going to slow on it. Yeah. Okay. What's uh? What's the mission right now? Is it getting the the belt and line fight? Uh, just to uh, see see what's out there, man. You know what I mean. Uh, take care of my family. That's oh, what yeah. the mission is. The mission okay. is take care of my family right now. So I got uh, I got three kids, man. You know, I, I got okay. a. Yeah. I got a wife, I got three kids, I got, I got to take care of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just can't be out there licking my dream, you know what I mean, foolish. It's got to have a cause, you know, I need to put this uh, this gift to work. Yeah, for sure. Uh, did, did you already have kids and your wife in your amateur days? Uh, yeah. Yep. How, how did you how did you make that work? Man, it's a lot of sacrifice, bro. It's a lot of sacrifice. It's like uh, a lot of sacrifices that people wouldn't aren't willing to make, and I don't blame. Them. I don't blame them at all because the sacrifices are are uh, can't get them back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's like, it's crazy, because chasing your dream requires way more sacrifice than your average person uh, who, who's not chasing their dream. Uh, and it, it's, it's tough, you know what I mean? Um, now it's, it, it's easy to find a little bit more balance, you know, that I know what I can sacrifice, what's worth sacrificing when I, I'm starting to weigh up options so uh, training and family time but back then bro it was just all training all training all training 
all trained. Family was the back burner, you know. Okay. Uh, my wife was the back burner. You know, my daughter, I was always at the gym. You know, I, I missed a lot of birthdays. I missed a lot of uh, funerals. I missed a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of family just get-togethers, you know. There's, there's a period of... Uh, there's a period of time where in the photo album, you know, I'm not in. Okay. Uh, that's just time that we'll never get back. And it's uh, it was tough, man. Um, but I, I wanna, I'd rather set an example, you know, uh, yeah. to my kids. I can't tell them to go live your dream, and I'm not doing it. Me. Yeah. Gotta show that as possible. Yeah. Sacrifice as well take. And uh yeah. they can make those sacrifices. They can choose not to. If they choose not to, they still chose right. Uh, it wasn't worth the sacrifice. Uh, whatever, time, whatever time they spent that on more worth it, what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I can relate to that. Uh, I lived in Thailand for three months, then came back, and everybody was like, oh, now you're going to stay, right? And I was like, yeah, my next trip is kind of already planned. <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah. for me, it's like, you know, I'm just, I wouldn't call it chasing a goal, but, uh, yeah, it's just for me, it's not really a sacrifice, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It's just, yeah, yeah it's not, it's natural. Yeah, it's just funny finding your path, man, doing what makes you happy. Yeah, whatever, sure, whatever, sure. Calls, whatever calls you, you know what I mean? Yeah, n- normal jobs don't really, I know, I, I kind of dislike it heavily. Yeah, I mean, the, don't, get, don't get me wrong, if I have to, I, I will, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, for and, sure. And I'll adjust to the rhythm of, of that, but, um, but... Yeah, man. I, I prefer to, you know, just make enough for now. Yeah. Did you, so when you had your amateur days, you were working as well? Yeah. I was, uh, I was an overnight stalker at Walmart. Okay. Uh, for a couple of years while I was trained. So I would, uh, Work from ten at night to seven in the morning. Okay. Go home, sleep for a couple hours, go to the gym at like two. I'd be there till like nine. Uh, go home, take a shower, go back to work at ten. Do the same thing, uh, for the rest of the week. Damn. That's what you had yeah. to do. That's it. That's what you have to do if that's what you want to do. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like if you want to do it, like you'll do it. Uh, like you don't have to do it if that's not what you want to do. You can say, you can say the thought of it is nice. You know, like you, you can say that, but uh, really can't say it's what you want to do because. Wherever you put, wherever we put our time is where we want to. Be. Uh, it, it's, it was, man. I don't, I don't know how. Uh, I, I just couldn't stop. It was like an addiction, you know. Mm. So it yeah. wasn't hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can kind of relate to that. That's also <laughs> like people, people see kind of. Like, well, they prefer to see, they look at like, your highlights. It's like, oh, you return to Thailand? And it's like, yeah, but, you know, I have to make sacrifice for this. And they're like, they, they kind of dismiss it. Yeah. And, and that's, like, you know, that's okay. Uh, the, the truth is, man, uh, we don't owe nobody an, an, an explanation, you know? Mm-hmm. Not even ourselves. We don't know ourselves an explanation. Why do I feel like this? I don't know. Then we start making up explanations because there's got to be an explanation. There's just times where there's just no explanation. Mm. That's the thing we have looking at it. But 
Where does your uh, where does your mindset come from? I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I can't tell. <laughs> I can't tell you. It's just, it's just, it's just the way like, I and the things that inspire me. You know, the people that I'm around, the the things that I do. You know, um, the the energy, the energy that I project and the energy that's projected. Uh, things just you know just happen. I don't know. Mm, so there is no. There was never a point in time where you were like, for example, I, I need to read more books or. Uh, I, I'm, know, I'm I'm still like that, you know. Every day, every day, I, I'm I'm trying to trying to better myself and see see what uh what I can do better. I'm not successful every day, you know. I can admit that, you know. Mm. Uh, but I, I'm trying. You know, I, I'm yeah. aware. Some days I'm successful, some days I'm not. You know, right now it's a battle between uh, as being 51% successful or 49% successful. You know what I mean? Uh, right now it's just it's just bouncing back and forth from there, and and, and that's a good balance. You know what I mean? Small yeah. fails, small wins. I ain't tripping. You know, uh, and Things are just lead to the next one thing to the next. You you don't seem like the kind of person that has a, a very strict routine. Is that correct? That has a what? You don't. Well, that's an assumption, but you don't seem like somebody who has like a very strict routine. It's more like flowing with it with what comes to you, or. Uh. I try, man. You try I to try. It's still, okay. I try. Cause sometimes I'm not. You no, know? I keep my composure around, around, uh, you know, uh, around everyone that I'm in front of. I keep my composure, or I try. Sometimes it, it, it breaks. But you know, I, I'm a work in progress, like everyone else. Um. Uh. Sometimes I'm going crazy, man. You know, sometimes I'm things aren't clicking. Sometimes I'm, I feel like I'm going against the grain. Sometimes, you know, it's just I, I feel like we all feel similar things. You know, uh, a lot of the same things. You know, you know, different situations, but uh, still trigger same uh, similar emotions. You know, so we all feel the same things. Uh, it's just knowing that. We're not the only ones going through it. Keep your composure. Because who knows, maybe your composure could help someone else's composure. You know? And the better composure you have, the better we feel about ourselves. Mm. Um, what's, what's next for you after your last fight? After my last fight? Yeah, like what's, what's next? Is there already a new fight scheduled? Or? Oh. Um, no, nah, I'm just training right now. Okay. Like I said, I'm just saying, we're, we're looking to fight, uh, maybe early next year, but right okay. now I'm just, I'm just enjoying the, uh, enjoying the view, man, you know, doing what I can, uh, stay in training, learning new things and just, uh, trying to put this, you know, put the pieces together. Now looking back in your career, do you think it was better the way you, you played it out? Like you have, I forgot, 13 fights right now, pro fights? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we both don't know. Um, there are guys who are more active. Do you think it was beneficial for you to like take breaks in between the fights to focus on improving? Um. I can't call it. Uh, I mean, yes and no. Everything has its pros and cons. You know, if the if the coin was flipped, uh, it would still have its pros and cons. You know, um, I can't point those out because I didn't experience it. But uh, uh, being active, you know, I I, I didn't experience that. But uh, for for a while, 
but I do think it helped me because I did get to play. I did get to uh, find a little bit more of myself, you know. I, I wasn't focused on any tasks. I was just training, you know, training, growing, and uh, without any stress, you know what I mean? So I was able to, to play with things a little bit more and, and work on things that I wanted to work on a little bit more, and, you know. Uh, it, it, it it helped tremendously. Mm. Uh, so even in your amateur days, you were not frequently fighting. Oh, in my amateur days, I was fighting every every other. Uh, every other uh, month. Okay. You never had the ambition to, to like make this your profession. Uh, you you're breaking up. I can hear. Oh, hold on. Can you hear me? Hello. Um. Are you still here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, so, I uh, forgot my last question. Um, where, where can people follow you? Like, how can they reach out to you? Oh. oh, you're back. Hello? Uh, 